Global concerns about the gender disparity in computing occupations have gained more importance with the emerging information age. These concerns motivated public policy debates addressing gender equality as computer applications exerted increasing influence in society. This dialogue helped to expand information technology innovations and to reduce the consequences of sexism. Background In the early days of computers and computing, women were well represented in the field. Women often worked as human computers, making complicated calculations and working in large groups, such as the Harvard computers. Women also worked on ballistics calculations and cryptography. Human computers who were women could be paid less than their male counterparts. By 1943, the majority of human computers were women. Many early programmers on machines such as ENIAC, were mostly women. The reason that women were involved as programmers and human computers was because, "...they expected programming to be a low-skill clerical function," and that the difficult work was the creation of the hardware, which male engineers largely worked on. The programmers of the ENIAC, six women who designed the public demonstrations and prepared the machine for its public debut were not fully recognized for their contributions by the media. By the 1960s, while computer programming was still touted as a good field for women to go into, major shifts were beginning to take place that would help push women out of the field. Men who were programming started to make the field more prestigious creating professional associations, education requirements for work, and by actively discouraging hiring women in the field. Hiring tools were introduced in which answers were shared among all male groups and clubs. Another way to push women out of the field was to use personality tests that favored people who were not interested in working with others, which was slanted towards a certain type of male applicant. After these trends were entrenched in the industry, it has continued to perpetuate itself into the modern day. Some computer science programs, such as Princeton, in the mid-1960s wouldn't even admit women into their program. Gender gap A survey, conducted by SWIFT, "...supporting women in information technology", based in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, asked 7,411 participants questions about their career choices. The survey found that females tend to believe that they lack the skill set needed to be successful in the field of computing. This study as well as others, provides a strong base for a positive correlation between perceived ability and career choice, a project based in Edinburgh, Scotland, "'Strategies of Inclusion, Gender and the Information Society' SIGIS released its findings based on research conducted in 48 separate case studies all over Europe. The findings focus on recruiting as well as retention techniques for women already studying in the field. These techniques range from the introduction of role models, advertisement campaigns, and the allocation of quotas, in order to make the computing field appear more gender neutral. Educating reforms, which will increase the quality of the educating body and technological facilities, are also suggested. Research suggests that Malaysia has a much more equal split that varies around the halfway mark. A job in the computing industry also implies a safe work environment. Strong belief by the previous generation that IT would be a flourishing sector with many job opportunities caused parents to encourage their children to take a computing career, no matter the gender. In India, a growing number of women are studying and taking careers in technical fields. The percentage of women engineers graduating from IIT Bombay grew from 1.8% 1 in 1972 to 8% in 2005. Arab women made up 59% of students enrolled in computer science in 2014 at government universities located in Saudi Arabia. Women in Eastern Europe, especially in Bulgaria and Romania, have high rates of pursuing coding and technology. However, women remain underrepresented in information technology fields. Topic statistics in education In the United States, the proportion of women represented in undergraduate computer science education and the white-collar information technology workforce peaked in the mid-1980s, and has declined ever since. In 1984, 37.1% of computer science degrees were awarded to women, the percentage dropped to 29.9% in 1989–1990, and 26.7% in 1997–1998. Figures from the Computing Research Association Tolby survey indicate that fewer than 12% of computer science bachelor's degrees were awarded to women at U.S. Ph.D. granting institutions in 2010-11. Although teenage girls are now using computers and the Internet at rates similar to their male peers, they are five times less likely to consider a technology-related career or plan on taking post-secondary technology classes. 
The National Center for Women and Information Technology reports that of the SAT takers who intend to major in computer and information sciences, the proportion of girls has steadily decreased relative to the proportion of boys, from 20% in 2001 to 12% in 2006. While this number has been decreasing, in 2001, the total number of these students both boys and girls reached its peak at 73,466. According to a College Board report, in 2006 there were slightly more girls than boys amongst SAT takers that reported to having coursework or experience in computer literacy, word processing, Internet activity, and creating spreadsheets, databases. It was also determined that more boys than girls vs reported coursework or experience with computer programming, although this may likely be caused by false reporting. Of the 146,437 students who reported having no coursework or experience, 61% were girls and 39% were boys. More boys than girls take Advanced Placement computer science exams. According to the College Board in 2006, 2,594 girls and 12,068 boys took the AP Computer Science A exam, while 517 girls and 4,422 boys took the more advanced AP Computer Science AB exam. From 1996 to 2004, girls made up 16 to 17 percent of those taking the AP Computer Science A exam and around 10 percent of those taking AP Computer Science AB exam. Topic statistics in the workforce Women's representation in the computing and information technology workforce has been falling from a peak of 38% in the mid-1980s. From 1993 through 1999, NSF's SESTAT reported that the percentage of women working as computer, information scientists including those who hold a bachelor's degree or higher in an S&E field or have a bachelor's degree or higher and are working in an S&E field declines slightly from 33.1% to 29.6% while the absolute numbers increased from 170,500 to 185,000. Numbers from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and Catalyst in 2006 indicated that women comprise 27 to 29% of the computing workforce. A national public radio report in 2013 stated that about 20% of all U.S. computer programmers are female. In open source fields, only 10% of women are programmers. Topic benefits of gender diversity A gender diverse team is more likely to create products that meet people's requirements. When women are underrepresented, many technical decisions are based on men's experiences, opinions, and judgment, resulting in a male slanted bias. In addition, a review of research on gender diverse teams reveals that gender diverse teams are more productive, more creative, and more able to stay on schedule and within budget, compared to homogenous teams, while other research review suggests that the results are mixed, with many studies showing no result, nonlinear results or even negative results of gender diversity on team performances. Research conducted by McKinsey and Company showed that companies with women in top management were more financially successful. In contrast, analysis of sample major U.S. companies showed no effect of inclusion of women or minority members on financial performance. These varied results give no conclusive evidence of the benefits of diversity. The book Gender and Computers: Understanding the Digital Divide states that the lack of participation of females in computing excludes them from the new economy, which calls for sophisticated computer skills in exchange for high salary positions. Topic. Factors contributing to lack of female participation Topic Education Diminished participation by women relative to men in computer science dates from about 1984 following mass marketing of personal computers to boys as toys to play games. Fiddling with computers by boys resulted in increased interest and readiness for computer science classes by young men. A study of over 7,000 high school students in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada showed that the degree of interest in the field of computer science for young women is comparably lower than that of young men. The same effect is seen in higher education. For instance, only 4% of female college freshmen expressed intention to major in computer science in the U.S. Research has shown that some aspects about computing may discourage women. One of the biggest turn-offs is the «geek factor». High school girls often envisage a career in computing as a lifetime in an isolated cubicle writing code. The «geek factor» affects both male and female high school students, but it seems to have more of a negative effect on the female students. In addition, computer programmers depicted in popular media are overwhelmingly male, contributing to an absence of role models for would-be female computer programmers. 
However, in 2015, computer science has for the first time become the most popular major for female students at Stanford University, in part to qualify for federal education funding distributed through the states. Most U.S. states and districts now focus on ensuring that all students are at least proficient in mathematics and reading, making it difficult for teachers to focus on teaching concepts beyond the test. According to a RAND Corporation study, such a concentration on testing can cause administrators to focus resources on tested subjects at the expense of other subjects e.g., science or distract their attention from other needs. Thus, computational thinking is unlikely to be taught either standalone or as integrated into other areas of study e.g., mathematics, biology any time in the near future. The National Center for Women and IT distributes free resources for increasing awareness of the need for teaching computer science in schools, including the Talking Points card, Moving Beyond Computer Literacy, Why Schools Should Teach Computer Science. <laughs> <laughs> Female and male perspectives According to a 1998–2000 ethnographic study by Jane Margolis and Alan Fisher at Carnegie Mellon University, men and women viewed computers very differently. Women interviewees were more likely to state that they saw the computer as a tool for use within a larger societal and or interdisciplinary context than did the men interviewed. On the other hand, men were more likely to express an interest in the computer as a machine. Moreover, women interviewed in this study perceived that many of their male peers were geeks with limited social skills. Females often disliked the idea that computers become their life. The students observed and interviewed in that study were probably not representative of students in general, since at that time, in order to be admitted to CMU Computer Science a student needed to have some programming experience. More research is needed to understand the ability to generalize Margolis and Fisher's findings. A two-year research initiative published in 2000 by AAUW found that, girls approach the computer as a tool, useful primarily for what it can do, boys more often view the computer as a toy, and or an extension of the self. For boys, the computer is inherently interesting. Girls are interested in its instrumental possibilities, which may include its use as an artistic medium. They express scorn toward boys who confuse real power and power on a screen. Quote, I see a computer as a tool, a high school girl declares. Quote, you might go play kung fu fighting, but in real life you are still a stupid little person living in a suburban way. Still, the National Assessment of Educational Progress showed as far back as 2000 that boys and girls use computers at about the same rates, albeit for somewhat different purposes. Nearly 1,000 students in University of Akron were surveyed, and it was discovered that females hold a more negative attitude towards computers than males. Another study assessed the computer-related attitude of over 300 students in University of Winnipeg and obtained similar results. This is thought to contribute to the gender disparity phenomenon in computing, in particular the female's early lack of interest in the field. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Barriers to advancement. Research on the barriers that women face in undergraduate computing has highlighted such factors as Undergraduate classroom teaching in which the «weed out» practices and policies privileging competition over cooperation tend to advantage men. Laboratory climates in which women are seen as foreign and not belonging at best, and experience blatant hostility and sexism at worst. Well-meaning people who unwittingly create stereotype threat by reminding students that «women can do computing as well as men». Strong resistance to changing the system in which these and other subtle practices are continuously reproduced, just like in the pre-college situation, solutions are most often implemented outside of the mainstream e.g., providing role models, mentoring, and women's groups, which can also create the perception among women, their male peers, and their professors that to be successful, women need extra help to graduate. Most people do not realize that the extra help is not academic, but instead access to the kind of peer networks more readily available to male students. Many women decline to participate in these extracurricular support groups because they do not want to appear deficient. In short, the conditions under which women and underrepresented minority students study computing are not the same as those experienced by men. Topic: <laughs> Lack of acknowledgement and promotion of skills. Women in technical roles often feel that the skills and feedback they bring to their jobs are not valued. According to a Catalyst report called, Women in Technology, Maximizing Talent, Minimizing Barriers, 
65% of females in technical roles felt that those they reported to were receptive and responsive to their suggestions, as compared to 75% of women in non-technical roles. This also speaks directly to the retention of females in the industry as females will commonly leave a company when they feel that what they are offering a company is not valued. The report shows the concerns felt about this by sharing the following quote from an interviewee. I would like to be involved with more projects than I am currently involved in, I feel that I am being underutilized. I would prefer my supervisor give me an opportunity to expand my skill sets and my responsibility at work." However, it is not enough to just acknowledge skills. Women also lack the support and advocacy needed to promote these skills. Women feel alone and at a loss because they lack role models, networks, and mentors. These support systems not only help women develop talent and opportunities for career advancement, but they are also needed to promote women to more senior roles. It can be understood that advocacy is a major player in the advancement of females into senior tech roles. <laughs> Stereotyping computer scientists Other research examines that undergraduate stereotype of the people in computer science and how changing this stereotype through media can influence women's interest in computer science. Through this study they concluded that the image of computer science majors that is most prevalent in popular culture and in the minds of current undergraduates is someone who is highly intelligent, primarily obsessed with computers, and socially unskilled. This image can be considered to contrast with the more people-oriented, traditionally feminine image. According to this study, students continue to generate and propagate this stereotype when asked to describe people in computer science. Based on the results of their experiment based on this idea, they took a group of women and men undergraduates and had them read a stereotypical article and a non-stereotypical article. They found that women who read the non-stereotypical article were much more interested in computer science than those who read the article with the above-mentioned stereotypical computer science student. Overall, they concluded that the underrepresentation of women in computing not due to women's lack of interest. The study contests the perception that college major decisions are free choices, instead they discuss the implications that the major decisions are more constrained by the prevalent stereotypes. This has a negative consequence such that it prevents women from developing an interest in these technical fields. The finding suggests that the stereotypical image of the computer scientists is unattractive to women who would otherwise be interested if presented with a true representation or role model from the computer science field. Racial stereotyping is also an issue, as computer scientists can often be thought of as white or Asian males, which can make it difficult for people who fall outside of those ethnicities to get hired. Non white or Asian women may experience additional difficulty because they fail to match either half of the stereotype. Nonetheless, it has been found that a woman's race is less likely to affect the probability of her choosing computing or a related field. Some cases that subvert the stereotype of typical people in computing include the person coming from a family that is already involved in computing or a related field. Also, coming from a family of a higher socioeconomic status is correlated to a higher likelihood of women choosing computing or a related field. Yet, many computing companies only search for employees from prestigious schools, which leaves fewer opportunities. Fraternity-like startup environments The disproportionate number of startups in the computing industry, and the disproportionate hiring of primarily young workers, have created an environment in which many firms' technical teams consist largely of workers who are recent college graduates, sometimes giving the businesses fraternity-like cultures, leading to sexism that discourages female participation. The phenomenon of fraternity-like environments among technology teams of startup firms has been termed programmer culture. Topic: <laughs> Psychological differences between genders. Women, on aggregate, prefer people-oriented careers, while their male counterparts show a preference for thing-oriented careers. The difference between male and female interests is larger in gender egalitarian countries than in non-gender egalitarian countries, which contradicts the theory that these differences are solely due to societal roles. Topic: <laughs> Bringing women into computing. The majority of data collected about women in IT has been qualitative analysis such as interviews and case studies. This data has been used to create effective programs addressing the underrepresentation of women in IT. 
Suggestions for incorporating more women in IT careers include formal mentoring, ongoing training opportunities, employee referral bonuses, multicultural training for all IT employees, as well as educational programs targeting women. The number of female college entrants expressing interest in majoring in computer science decreased in the 2000s to pre 1980s levels. A research study was initialized by Alan Fisher, then Associate Dean for Undergraduate Computer Science Education at Carnegie Mellon University, and Jane Margolis, a social scientist and expert in gender equity in education, into the nature of this problem. The main issues discovered in interesting and retaining women in computer science were feelings of an experience gap, confidence doubts, interest in curriculum and pedagogy, and peer culture. Universities across North America are changing their computer science programs to make them more appealing to women. Proactive and positive exposures to early computer experiences, such as the Alice Project, founded by the late Randy Pausch at Carnegie Mellon University, are thought to be effective in terms of retention and creation of enthusiasm for women who may later consider entering the field. Institutions of higher education are also beginning to make changes regarding the process and availability of mentoring to women that are undergraduates in technical fields. Another strategy for addressing this issue has been early outreach to elementary and high school girls. Programs like all-girl computer camps, girls after-school computer clubs, and support groups for girls have been instilled to create more interest at a younger age. A specific example of this kind of program is the Canadian Information Processing Society Outreach Program, in which a representative is sent to schools in Canada, speaking specifically to grade 9 girls about the benefits of information technology careers. The purpose is to inform girls about the benefits and opportunities within the field of information technology. Companies like IBM also encourage young women to become interested in engineering, technology and science. IBM offers X, ITE exploring interests in technology and engineering camps for young women from the ages of 11 to 13. Additionally, attempts are being made to make the efforts of female computer scientists more visible through events such as the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women Conference Series which allows women in the field to meet, collaborate and present their work. In the U.S., the Association for Women in Computing was founded in Washington, D.C. in 1978. Its purpose is to provide opportunities for the professional growth of women in computing through networking, and through programs on technical and career-oriented topics. In the United Kingdom, the British Computer Society BCS and other organizations have groups which promote the cause of women in computing, such as BCS Women, founded by Sue Black, and the BCS Women's Forum. In Ontario, Canada, the GR8 Designs for GR8 Girls program was founded to develop grade 8 girls' interest in computer science. Topic: 2000s efforts. Topic: National Center for Women and Information Technology. The National Center for Women and IT (NCWIT) is currently one of the lead supporters of women's entry and retention in computing. Their goal is to help to create academic and work environments that are welcoming and fair for women. Their research shows that encouragement is one of the key elements to help women enter a primarily male-dominated field. They found women report more often than their male counterpart that they entered computer science due to the influence of a teacher, family member, or friend's encouragement. Their findings conclude that support can make the difference in a woman's belief that she is competent enough to compete in computing. Thus, the NCWIT developed a program called Aspirations in Computing in order to provide girls with the necessary encouragement, a network of support, and female role models. In a survey done, nearly half of the girls polled said they would feel uncomfortable being the only girl in a group or class. One of the Aspirations' main goals is to enable girls to feel less isolated in these predicaments. They have found that creating a sense of belonging or fitting in is fundamental for interest and current retention. The NCWIT Aspirations Award was created in order to involve women in a national competition. Awardees are selected for their computing and IT aptitude, leadership skills, academics, and plans for graduate schooling. Due to their reach and awareness of the program, they saw a 54% increase in the girls applying in the 2013 season compared to the previous year. Topic: <laughs> Academies and organizations. In September 2013, Ada Developers Academy, a tuition-free one-year intensive school in software development for women was launched by Technology Alliance in Seattle, and students could even apply to receive a $1,000 per month stipend. The first half of the course focuses on HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails and Computer Science Fundamentals. 
Having started in the U.S., Girl Develop It is a network of city chapters that teach women from all parts of the country learn to develop software with HTML and CSS, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, Python, and Android. The organization was co-founded by Sarah Chips and Vanessa Hurst in 2010. As of 2013, it has 17 city chapters running regular courses and events. The programs offered by Girl Develop It are all taught by volunteers that are employed in the technology field. Structural and content resources used to teach the programs have been developed and are offered for free both on their website and on github.com. Hackbright Academy is an intensive, women-only 10-week programming course in San Francisco. A Moms in Tech sponsorship for Hackbright Academy is also available for mothers who are former IT professionals and wish to retrain and return to work as a technically hands-on lead or manager, sponsored by Facebook. Geek Girl is an organization that was started in March 2006 by Leslie Fishlock. It is an organization that acts as a technology resource for women. The organization strives to empower women of all ages through making technology easy to understand and use. These services are provided entirely by women. Though the target audience tends to be female and the organization was founded on the goal to empower women, men are also encouraged to participate in any of the events or services the organization offers. Geek Girl hosts localized events, meetups, and conferences. The organization also supports a video channel titled Geek Girl TV that provides workshops about technological tools as well as provides coverage for their events for those who are unable to attend. Additionally, Geek Girl's website hosts a blog that provides technology-related news and information that is accessible to a reader with minimal technology experience. Grace Hopper Academy, named after Rear Admiral Grace Hopper, is another woman-only immersive programming school located in New York City. A partner school to Full Stack Academy, Grace Hopper's curriculum focuses on the mean stack, and through education and mentorship, aims to help women begin careers in software engineering. Codeed is a nonprofit organization that focuses on teaching computer science to young girls in underserved communities. The organization partners with schools and programs to help provide volunteer teachers, computer science course offerings, and computers. The organization was co founded by Angie Ciarvoni and September Camvar in 2010. Codeed provides courses in HTML and CSS, and provides the curriculum and course material for free under a Creative Commons attribution license. The organization offers classes that are taught by a team of two volunteer teachers, provide lessons in one-hour blocks that may be dispensed in a way that works for the receiving school, and teaches through fun and experimental projects. CodeEd currently offers services in New York City, Boston, and San Francisco. She is an organization that facilitates a community driven to inspire women to take on a role in the computer sciences. The organization was founded at Stanford University by now alumni Alora Israni and Aina Agawal, who spearheaded the organization's inaugural conference in April 2012. The conference featured female speakers who held tech positions in companies like Google, Pinterest, and Facebook and was well attended. The conference inspired its organizers to continue with and expand upon She++ and now facilitates participation initiatives through hosting additional events such as a 2013 conference, curating a video library that features inspirational stories from technology professionals, and by offering a mentorship program. The organization is run by a collection of female students and Stanford University. Nerd Girls was launched in 2000 by Dr. Karen Panetta, a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Tufts University. It is an organization that is represented by a group of female engineering students each year and encourages women to take on roles in the engineering and technology profession. The organization celebrates the coincidence of science knowledge and femininity. Participating members solve real-world problems as a group by addressing and fixing technology-related issues in the community. Nerd Girls has gained national attention since its launch and has been approached by media producers to create a reality show based off the organization's problem-solving activities. Nerd Girls is sponsored by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers IEEE. Femgineer was started in 2007 by Pornima Vijayashankar. It was originally developed as a blog that focused on engineers, which evolved into an organization that supports women in technology careers. Femgineers is now an education-focused organization that offers workshops, free teaching resources on the topic of technology, supports forums and meetups, and a team has been developed to continue to expand on the original blog. Pornima Vijayashankar is an avid public speaker and regularly speaks at technology-related conferences and events about the technology industry and about Femgineer itself. In addition to founding Femgineer, she also founded a startup called Busybee in 2010 that supports growing fitness businesses, teaches technology workshops for tech-driven organizations around the country, and was named one of the 10 women to watch in tech in 2013 by Inc. magazine.
Topic: <laughs> Post-secondary education organization. Numerous post-secondary education institutions have student-run organizations that focus on the advancement of women in computer science. In addition to SHE++ based out of Stanford University, Rochester Institute of Technology supports a chapter of the organization called Women in Computing. The campus's chapter of the organization is composed of students, faculty and staff at RIT and they strive to support and further develop the culture of computing to women. This effort is not only focused on their campus, but in the larger community. They host events both on their campus located in Henrietta, New York, and within surrounding Rochester schools. RIT is among a national list of schools that host a chapter of Women in Computing, which is founded in the Organization Association of Computing Machineries Committee for Women in Computing (ACMW). Harvard University hosts the organization called Harvard Undergraduate Women in Computer Science (WISC). The organization aims to promote women in computing across a variety of schools and industries, educate women on the profession of computer science, and provide opportunities for women in technical fields. WICS supports the annual conference named WICODE, a conference that aims to promote women's involvement in computer science. Topic Paysetters In an effort to improve the gender composition in computing, the Women and Information Technology created a nationwide U.S. program called Paysetters. Through this program, 24 academic and corporate organizations added close to 1,000 net new women to the field of computer science by 2012. These net new women are women in the sciences that had not originally intended on pursuing a computer science degree. Paysetters is the first program of its kind where different organizations come together to identify effective ways to broaden the participation of women in computer science. There are currently more than 300 corporations, academic institutions, government agencies and non-profit organizations devoted to this cause. Together they build internal teams in order to develop and fund the needed programs and share their overall results. Paysetters organizations include some very prestigious companies such as AT&T, Intel, Microsoft, Google, Georgia Tech, Pfizer, and IBM to name a few. These are a few examples of their results due to the work with Paysetters. Google, built a new programs for undergraduate women and held a career development panel of engineers which gave women the chance to participate in mock interviews. Due to these efforts, the number of women applicants grew and Google doubled the number of women in their Software Engineering Summer Internship Program in 2011 compared to 2010. Intel, piloted a program called Command Presence Workshop in which senior technical women participated in specialized training. Virginia Tech, created a team of CS faculty, advisors, and student mentors to interact with potential female undergraduates and high school students. They saw a 56% increase in the number of female students who showed interest in their science programs. Topic relation to gender theory There are a number of thinkers who engage with gender theories and issues related to women and technology. Such thinkers include, for example, Donna Haraway, Sadie Plant, Julie Wosk, Sally L. Hacker, Evelyn Fox Keller, Janet Abbott, Thelma Estrin, and Thomas J. Mesa, among others. A 2008 book titled Gender and Information Technology, Moving Beyond Access to Co-Create Global Partnership uses Rian Isler's cultural transformation theory to offer an interdisciplinary, social systems perspective on issues of access to technology. The book explores how shifting from dominator towards partnership systems, as reflected in four primary social institutions communication, media, education, and business might help society move beyond the simplistic notion of access to co-create a real digital revolution worldwide. A 2000 book titled Athena Unbound provides a life course analysis based on interviews and surveys of women in the sciences from an early childhood interest, through university, to graduate school and finally into the academic workplace. The thesis of this book is that women face a special series of gender-related barriers to entry and success in scientific careers that persist despite recent advances. Computer scientist Karen Petrie from University of Dundee has developed an argument to illustrate why an attack on sexism in computing is not an attack on men. Ian Gent, University of St Andrews, has described this idea which is key to the argument as the Petrie multiplier. According to Jay McGrath Cohoon, senior research scientist for the National Center for Women and Information Technology, there are a few possible hypotheses for why women are underrepresented in computer sciences attributed to already established theories about the influence of gender and technology stereotypes. One gender related hypothesis is that women find it more difficult than men to contribute to the intellectual life of the field in the sense that reviewers of their work are unconsciously downgraded due to their status as women or those women have lower confidence in this field that inhibits women's willingness to publicly present their technical findings. 
Due to this barrier of women as second-class citizens in the computing world, it creates an environment that is not accessible to women. A study by the Psychology of Women Quarterly backs this hypothesis up by concluding that even the enduring effect of single brief exposures to stereotypical role models leaves a strong mark. Their findings reported that the most important factor in recruiting women to the computer science field is that women meet with a potential role model, regardless of gender of that role model, that conveys to the woman a sense of belonging in the field. This finding suggests that support and encouragement are the two most important aspects that can influence women participation in computing. In order for women to be more receptive to the field is if the environment became a more welcoming place by their male counterparts. Cordelia Fine in her book Delusions of Gender argues that apparent differences are due to constant exposure to societal beliefs of gender difference. Fine also argues that, while social effects on sex differences are well established, spurious results, poor methodologies, and untested assumptions mean we don't yet know whether, on average, males and females are born differently predisposed to systemizing versus empathizing. Another argument for why women are less prevalent in computer science is the ill defined nature of computing, according to Paul de Palma. In his article Why Women Avoid Computer Science, he postulates that women find careers in computing unattractive. He finds that among the many reasons offered, he believes the nature of computing is what drives them away. He claims that young men who are drawn to computer science and engineering are those that like to tinker, those who like to use tools to create and dismantle objects. He further claims that computing is not a true profession, that traditional career paths such as law, business, and medicine are more certain and profitable on average than computing. He compares it to using a computer. Computers nowadays do not come with lengthy manuals on the inner workings of the modern day computer. In fact, our tools are always more complicated than they're what they are used for. Thus, the tinkering nature of men, the drive born from gender stereotyping from birth, has made men successful in this field for they are more inclined to spend endless hours of tinkering with software and hardware. His claim revolves around the focus that boys and girls fall into gender stereotypes girls who usually are given dolls and boys who are given trucks and toy toolboxes. He claims that these gender roles placed on children is one of the primary causes for the gender gap seen in computer science. He postulates that if we were to see more girls playing with trucks and other boy-related toys that perhaps we would see an increase in this tinkering nature and therefore more participation of women in the computer science field. Topic Notable organizations Ada Initiative Anita Borg Institute for Women and Technology, Group for Support of Women, runs the Grace Hopper Celebration of Women in Computing Yearly Conference. Association for Computing Machinery ACM Committee on Women Association for Women in Computing, one of the first professional organizations for women in computing. AWC is dedicated to promoting the advancement of women in the computing professions. BCS Women, a women-only specialist group of the British Computer Society Black Girls Code, non-profit focused on providing technology education to young African American women. Center for Women in Technology, University Center focused on increasing the representation of women in the creation of technology. Computing Research Associations Committee on the Status of Women in Computing Research CRAW, group focused on increasing the number of women participating in computer science and engineering CSE, research and education at all levels. Girl Develop It, a non-profit organization that provides affordable programs for adult women interested in learning web and software development in a judgment-free environment. Girl Geek Dinners, an international group for women of all ages. Girls Who Code, a national non-profit organization dedicated to closing the gender gap in technology. Linux Chicks, a women-oriented community in the open source movement. National Center for Women and Information Technology, a non-profit that increases the number of women in technology and computing. Sisters, a moderated listserv dedicated to mentoring women in the sisters community. Women in Computing in Canada Women in Technology International, global organization dedicated to the advancement of women in business and technology. Women's Technology Empowerment Center w. Tech, non-profit organization focused on providing technology education and mentoring to Nigerian women and girls. See also List of organizations for women in science Sexism in the technology industry